If we want to know about the distances to stars and other objects within our own galaxy, we can use geometric parallax, spectroscopic parallax, and standard candle methods using variable stars. To get the distances to nearby stars, we use geometric parallax in which a an astronomer can measure the parallax angle of a nearby star against the background of uh, faraway stars. And this geometric technique is quite accurate. We can determine the distances to stars out to about 1,000 parsecs, which is roughly 3,000 light years. But 1,000 parsecs is not very big. Our galaxy is 100,000 light years, or about 30,000 uh, parsecs across in diameter. So 1,000 parsecs is not very far. So if we want to know the distances to stars even farther away, it would be nice to know what their absolute magnitudes or their luminosities are. Because if we knew that, then we could, con we could compare the absolute magnitude to the apparent magnitude, how bright the star appears to us, and then get the distance from that. Well, it turns out that main sequence stars of a given spectral class do share absolute magnitudes. And so if you know what the absolute magnitudes are for, say, an O-type star, then it doesn't matter at what distance it is. You can look at the spectrum and determine that it's an O-type star. And if you already know the absolute magnitude, then you'll be able to determine its distance just by comparing to the apparent magnitude. Here's how astronomers can determine the absolute magnitudes of all the different main sequence stars. First, you use geometric parallax to measure the distances to nearby main sequence stars, and then plot the properties of those stars on an HR diagram. The HR diagram that I'm showing you here is data from about 5,000 stars collected by a satellite telescope called Hipparchos, which did nothing but measure the parallax angles of nearby stars. And so astronomers are able to use the parallax angles, get the distances for these stars, and in concert with the apparent magnitude, if you know apparent magnitude and you know distance, then you can figure out the absolute magnitude and thus the luminosity of the star. So now that we've calibrated this, now that we know the absolute magnitude of any main sequence star, all we have to do is find them, whether or not they're uh, closer or farther than 1,000 parsecs, and we can determine their distance. So if a star is farther away than 1,000 parsecs, you're going to have to use its spectrum. You'll collect light from the star in your telescope, use its spectrum to determine its spectral type, and if it's a main sequence star, determine what its absolute magnitude is by reading it off of the HR diagram. So here's an example. What if we had a G0 main sequence star with an apparent magnitude of positive 10? What is its distance? Well, we can go to the HR diagram and for a G0 type star, a G0 type star has an absolute magnitude of maybe positive 4. And so if what we do is compare the absolute magnitude of positive 4 to the apparent magnitude of positive 10, we can find that the distance must be more than 10 parsecs. This is similar to a technique that we talked about before, comparing the apparent and the absolute magnitude because absolute magnitude is how bright the star would appear if it's 10 parsecs away. For this example, we have a G0 type star. If it were 10 parsecs away, it would appear positive 4. But it actually appears positive 10, which means it's farther than 10 parsecs. Now, I'm just giving you a qualitative way of thinking about this, but an astronomer can actually use something called the distance modulus equation and plug in the apparent magnitude number, the absolute magnitude number, and get a distance out that's in parsecs. In my introductory astronomy class, I'm not going to make you do that calculation. But just know that astronomers have a, an equation that's based on the uh, logarithmic brightness system for stars and the inverse square law for light. And so this allows astronomers to determine how far away a star is based on a comparison between how bright it appears which how, with how bright it actually looks.